Hello and welcome to part two of this series dealing with our CSTR, dealing with just reactor dynamics. And so in this second part of the series, what we're going to be doing is we're going to code out what we've talked about with the, the time-dependent differential equations that we derived in the previous video. So we're going to code that and then we're going to do the step changes for the cooling jacket. So the initial condition was 300 kelvins. We're going to see what happens when it is the initial conditions are starting at 290 kelvins, and then after we see that display, then we're going to change it from 300 kelvins as the initial condition to 305 kelvins. Before we move forward with the coding, one thing we need to notice is we have to separate our, uh, our temperature with respect to time. We have to get that by itself before we proceed, and so all we have to do for that is to divide this here by our density, volume, and heat capacity. So when we do that and we divide this entire side by that, what we're going to be left with is our temperature with respect to time equaling our flow rate coming in divided by the volume, temperature, and minus the temperature there plus our enthalpy times the reaction rate times the concentration divided by the density <clears throat> uh, multiplied by the heat capacity. There we go. Minus, then this doesn't have any of those values in the numerator, so this is going to have all of them in the denominator. Density, volume, and heat capacity. This is going to allow us to, now this has it separated out, we can then proceed forward. Uh, a few things to note as we go ahead and code now is going to be that because we are dealing with non-linear differential equations, we're going to use the solve IVP tool for our integration methods. And we'll move forward now and begin to Im import our tools that we're going to need for our coding. So we're going to start by, because we're going to be doing uh, arrays, so we're going to need our, our numpy. We're going to uh, scipy.integrate. Here's where we're going to be getting our solve IVP tool. We're going to be plotting to show the concentration and the temperature with respect to time and, and what the behavior is like in simulated. So we're going to need to plot that out. So that's going to be from plot lead at subplots, import make subplots is going to be our tool. Then we're going to import plotly.io as PO. Now for the purpose of having a dark background. Plotly dark. There we go. Now what we're going to need to do is import our parameters for our situation here. So we've already talked about those and walked through those in our first video. Now we're going to import these and code these out. So our flow rate coming in is 100 and that is in units of liters per minute. Then we have our concentration coming in and that is one mole mole per liter. Then we have our TI, let's see here, let's call that, that's fine. And that is at 350 Kelvins. Oops, 350 in units of Kelvins. And let's give that dot there, period. All right, volume equals 100 liters. Then we have our density equaling 1,000. And that is in units of grams or liters. Then we have our heat capacity, which is 0 0.239, and that is in units of joules over grams per 
gallons. There we go. Now we have our enthalpy. Let's and that is 5e to the fourth. We go now our er equals 8750. Oh, I should put the units in for this, just so we're keeping track of them. And that is joules per mole. This is in units of Calvin. Our frequency factor <clears throat> for our Ernest equation is 7.2 e to the 10, what is that? And then reciprocal of minute, there we go. Now we've got our heat coefficient transfer for the cooling jacket, and that is of e to fourth in units of joules, by minutes per Kelvin. Now, here we have our initial conditions. So these are parameters. Now we're going to have our initial conditions. So the initial condition for the, the heat jacket was 300 Kelvins. Our initial condition for our um, concentration is 0 0.5. And that is in units of moles over liter, and then our initial temperature equals 350 Kelvins. And then what we're simulating though is we're, we're wanting to step it down from 300 down to 290 units of Kelvin. And we're going to go ahead and simulate it for 10 minutes. Um, it doesn't like... Should we take that out? Let's see what happens. Okay, I accepted that. Now, what we're going to be doing is solving uh, these out. And so now we need to go ahead and define our right-hand side. And <clears throat> it's going to be the, the time is our independent variable. And then the vector is our array value. So it's going to be our two dependent variables, which we've already derived the equations for. So it's going to be our concentration and the tank, and then the temperature. So both of those things are going to be changing with respect to time. So let's go ahead and set those now going to our vector. Now within our, uh, let's not switch it yet. K, that's gonna, we're gonna need that. And that's going to equal our K naught value times um, we're going to do it was times the exponent exponent of our ER. So that is the provided parameter divided by our temperature. There we go. And what we're going to be returning is our two different differential equations. And so, so now what we're going to do is we're going to def return, so what we've defined, we've, de we've defined our right hand side of the equation. Now we're going to return both our concentration and our temperature. So those are the two differential equations that we derived in the previous video, both of them with respect to time. And we'll start with concentration, which leaves us with, if we put this here, there we go. We're going to be dealing with this part right here, where we've divided by V, which has isolated our concentration with respect to time. So that's going to give us our flow rate coming in, divided by our volume. And that is going to be multiplied by the concentration coming in, minus the concentration in the tank going out, then minus the reaction rate times the overall concentration at each respective point of time. 
then uh, get rid of that parentheses there. Then our second equation is with respect to temperature. And so we have our flow rate coming in, divided by our volume, multiplied by our TI, which is the concentration of the inlet stream, which we've defined as 350 Kelvins, minus our temperature. Then that is going to be plus our enthalpy multiplied by the reaction rate multiplied by our concentration at each point divided by our density multiplied by our heat capacity. I believe I got all those values correct. Now we're going to minus our heat, our coefficient of heat transfer, and that is going to be getting multiplied by our temperature minus the TC, temperature of the cooling jacket. And this whole thing will be divided by our density, multiplied by the volume, multiplied by the heat capacity. So then close that out. Here we go. Let's see if it accepts it. Great. Now we're going to set our solve IVP tool. So we'll go ahead and name it Sol. And that is going to be our solve IVP, which gives us our function. So we need our function here, which is our right hand equation. And the time span it's going to be happening in, which we've defined from zero to 10 minutes for time end. Then our initial conditions. And then the method we're going to be using is Rodau and a dense output. And if that underscore is true. And all we're, uh, it's going to give us an entire, just a big list of information, we're only wanting to know the specific solution for both our concentration and our temperature at each point. And so we're just going to take the solution. <clears throat> what did I just do? What have I done? I think we're okay. That was strange. But alas, all is well in the world today. Or is it? It looks like it. Okay. The next thing is we're going to need to plot this out. So let's go ahead and find this. We're going to, we want equally spaced intervals, everything from two until our time that we have established. And let's get 500 increments in there. And then um, what we're going to be needing next is everything along for our, for our concentration for A and our temperature is everything, the solution for each part along the entirety of the plot. So each respective point in time, all 500 values between zero and 10 minutes, we want to know the concentration value and the temperature value at every single one of those points. That's what we just did. Then lastly is let's go ahead and plot this out. So then we're going to have our fig equals uh, make subplots. And we want our, in this case, we're, what we're wanting is we want two columns and one row. The, the, the reason for that is we have two different sets of units going on here. So the concentration is going to be in moles per liter. Our temperatures in Kelvins, those can't be the same dependent variable. I mean, they're, they're two completely different dependent variables, but they're both with the same independent variable of time, meaning we can have one row, which is time, two columns, one for concentration, which would be the first one, and one for temperature. So let's go ahead and label that out now. Columns is going to equal two. Rows is going to equal one, there we go. So now we're going to go ahead and add a scatter plot, and that's going to give us our x equals 
x plot, no, not x plot, t plot. y equals, we're going to start with concentration first, and it's going to be the method is going to equal lines, uh, it's going to be in column one, and then it is going to be, um, we're going to name it concentration. Keep these two things straight. And lastly, let's go ahead and copy this. And all we need to change is temperature there, column two, and the name is temperature. I didn't like, what did I do wrong here? Wow, that's a lot of information. All right, so I found our culprit. Go a couple culprits here. One is it's not method. I had method in my head from doing solve by VP and our Radal method, but it's mode equals lines. The other problem is we have to include row, the rows for both plots here. See what happens here? Great. I like that. So here we see that we've got our temperature, or sorry, here we have our concentration going up until it almost reaches here. We've almost got our one mole, which is coming in and the temperature is decreasing down up until it's at a temperature where it's not even reacting anymore. And so the majority of the concentration that's coming in is, is staying at that one mole concentration and the temperature has just dropped to a point where the reactions just, they don't have enough energy to cause reactions anymore. So that's what happens when we step it down, even just 10 degrees Kelvin, just, um, bring it down from 10 Kelvin, uh, this is um, what happens here. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and see what happens when we bring it up and step it up to 305. Five degrees more for the Kelvin. So our cooling jacket here, I'm going to step it up to 305, run that, run that, that. And overflow, Let's see what happens. All right, so that is substantially different. Um, so just five degrees different for our cooling jacket <clears throat> um, gives us some pretty wild behavior here. So as our concentration, um, well, here we see on the on the right here we got our temperature. It climbs, climbs, climbs because it's an exothermic reaction. It continues to give off heat as it continues to give off heat. The reaction or the molecules are going to be reacting more often, more consistently, and so that then that's going to release more exothermic energy, and so it's just going to con continue to build on itself all the way up until um, there's no more concentration to interact with, and then on we see the cycle goes. So it's just going to be that back and forth cycle because then more concentration we see is coming into our system, into our uh, reactor tank, and then that's going to allow the, the, the exothermic reaction to happen again, and then it's just gonna be that ongoing process. Uh, and it goes on, well, let's see what happens. We have about 100 minutes, so I mean, it's a bad idea. Let's just find out. Instead of 10 minutes, we'll do 100 minutes. Yeah, so it's, it's just going to go on forever. Um, so that's a pretty wild behavior there. And that is um, just, we were just trying to model there, stepping down to see what the behavior would be for the cooling tank, and then stepping up just 5 degrees Kelvin for our cooling tank. And that concludes our video series here, dealing with the continuous stirred reactor tank. Thank you.